Uh, good morning, GCMA members. Thank you very much for joining us today. We're going to be about an hour as we deliver a whistle stop presentation based on golf membership sales and new member integration 59 clip style. This is great timing. There's no doubt your membership inquiries have already started to peak this time of year. If you've got any question regarding today's session or 59 Club services, as Mike said, just drop me a quick email after the session uh, and I'll call you straight back. I'll share my details at the end. And of course, I'll be in touch with you over the next couple of weeks to discuss your club needs and how we can help you. Uh, you'll also receive a survey from Mike Hyde powered by our My59 software, which I'll discuss with you later, uh, asking you to rate today's session. So go easy on us. Uh, hopefully, uh, no one will need to leave early as I announce a special offer at the end uh, that all GCMA members can take full advantage of. So before we discuss some proven best practices on how to manage uh, a membership inquiry at your club, I just wanted to share a little background on 59 Club and how I became involved in this business. I started my career in the early 90s as a young PJ assistant at the Belfry, working for uh, Robert Maxfield, who's now the chief exec of the PJ, and also Simon Wordsworth, who happens to be the CEO of 59 Club and founder. After 10 what were fantastic years at the Belfry, I left as the head teaching professional and golf operation manager to open up and run McInnes Peninsula Golf and Country Club uh, in South Wales as their director. Uh, at the very same time, Simon left the Belfry to set up 59 Club. Uh, basically, he saw a huge gap in the market as no company could supply him the level of detail he wanted based on star performance within his golf operation. Hence, 59 Club was born. Uh, McInnes became a pilot club shortly after this. Uh, which simply meant I was using 59 Club services to train and manage my golf ops and sales staff. After five years, I then left McInnes to become a director of 59 Club and help Simon manage and grow the business. 59 Club is now into its 10th year and assisting hundreds of golf and leisure managers around the globe to measure and improve their customer service and sales etiquette across all revenue streams. How do we do this? Clubs either receive an independent audit delivered by 59 Club or they can utilize uh, My59 software to conduct their own internal mystery shopper audit with access to our entire benchmarking products. So whether that be a golf visitor experience, a retail inquiry, custom fit, a golf lesson, a membership sales inquiry, the call and show round, what we're covering today, you name it, we can measure it. Managers can also deliver member and guest surveys online using the My59 platform and it's golf and leisure specific question templates. The feedback that uh, clubs receive from their mystery shopper audits and surveys will always pinpoint strength and weaknesses within their operation. All of our products provide industry-wide perspectives as clubs are benchmarked against the industry average and the elite performing clubs. Uh, a huge part of what we now do is to deliver staff training which will remedy any weaknesses that have been identified to assist clubs to advance. As you can see, it's not just big name, big budget venues that benefit from our service. Over the past 10 years, we've seen a huge influx of clubs of all sizes and makeup, from privately owned clubs to council run, uh, committee run, uh, resorts, etc., etc. The one thing all our clients have in common is the desire to please their customers and more importantly, the foresight to invest their time working with us to improve customer service levels and sales performance. Big shout out to the 59 Club managers present on this webinar. Chris, I hope the sun is shining on Fox Hills today. We're also really proud to have partnered with some of the biggest names in golf who support our efforts to improve the experience that golf provides. Uh, of course, that includes the GCMA, and that's why we're here today. I am sure you're familiar with two of our partners, Playmore Golf and Albatross, who I believe also recently delivered similar webinar sessions for you GCMA members over the last few weeks. Okay, so what does great service actually look like? 
Great service is delivered by staff who predict customer expectations and react accordingly. Your staff need process, motivation and reward if you expect them to consistently deliver. That's why we've taken every single customer encounter in golf and mapped out the process for servicing your customers. From visiting golfers, existing members, uh, new and prospective members, corporate society organisers, etc. You name it, we measure it, then help you advance it. 59 Club is quite literally bursting at the seams with global statistics. It's what our managers rely on every month to understand what good, bad and ugly experiences look like. As part of our training today, we're going to share some of these stats with you. Okay, so let's explore the sales process that affords our clubs the skill set to achieve these impressive outcomes. We're going to delve into our mystery shopper audits so you can appreciate the rationale behind our benchmarking criteria. We'll start off with the inquiry call, then work our way towards the show round appointment. Key objectives of the call. Quite simply, it's your job to inspire and excite the prospect to want to come down to the club to meet you and learn more about the membership experience and tour the facilities. How do you inspire and excite your prospects at this call stage? You learn about the person, then you do something with that information in a related fashion. Today, we're gonna to delve into the process of extracting key personal information from a prospect, which will enable you to deliver a detailed but tailored promotion of your facilities, member services, unique selling points, those little things that make you better and different from your competitors, and also your member benefits and discounts. A tailored promotion will always trigger more emotion. It creates a club cares culture, helps you stand up from your competitors and ultimately helps you convert sales. So let's break the call down into five steps. This is what our criteria is based on. Number one, we're gonna try and deflect that price into the research element of the call where you learn about the prospect. You then promote accordingly based on that person's needs. You then book an appointment, you get them down to the club, and then you send an email to confirm that appointment. And you also make a call to waterproof the appointment before they arrive. Okay, so number one, let's delve in even deeper here, price deflection. The first question you're going to be asked is how much is membership at your club? I'm sure you agree. They're not going to ask about your social aspects, your competitions, your roll-ups, your regular groups, member benefits, your integration protocol. It might be very relevant to them, but they're not going to ask those questions to open up. They're always going to ask how much is membership. You need to avoid talking price. You need to deflect this conversation immediately. How can you put a price on something when the customer doesn't appreciate what they will receive for their money? It is financial suicide to give the price to someone over the phone where they have no concept whatsoever of what your member experience looks like. This is your opportunity to demonstrate that your clubs afford a great member experience, great club life. So shout about the service quality and member community. I can tell you members don't give a damn about price if they can see they're going to receive a, a great service and a great member experience at your club. As they say, value equals experience, less cost. Now, we've um, put plenty of stats uh, throughout the presentation on the slides uh, based on our mystery shopper audits completed during 2017. Uh, the pilot scheme stats represent a group of clubs who agreed to a one-off test, but were not privy to our benchmarking criteria before we tested them. The 59 club industry stats represent all of the clubs who got tested within this particular product last year, all tests through all clubs. And the podium stats represent the top three performing clubs for the year. You'll see a breakdown of how they achieved that. So research element, you deflect the price conversation into the research element of the call to learn about the prospect and understand their motives for a membership at your club. So by asking a series of questions, you're also building rapport, again, in trust at the same time, and as you know, rapport sells. So who are we selling to? You're going to ascertain their playing history, 
their playing habits and their golfing ability. So if you refer to the stats, you can see the pilot scheme here failed miserably. They did not have a clue who was at the end of that call. They didn't understand that golfer's history, habits, and handicap. You're also going to ask, where else are they looking at? You need to know what you're up against. Why? So you can pitch your strengths against your competitors' weaknesses when you get to the promotion element, which is you know, the next stage. You need to also find out why are they interested in joining your club? So what promoted their inquiry? What prompted that inquiry? What spurred them on to consider a membership at your club? What made them think about you? You also need to find out their main membership requirements. What do they really want out of the membership? As you know, there's an abundance of reasons why golfers look to join a club. So whether they're uh, new in the area, they're looking to meet new people, it could be for competitive golf, team golf, it could be the social aspect of the club, it could be to entertain clients if it's a corporate lead, it could be that just simply you're a better course and it's a better test of golf. And again, referring to the stats there, pilot scheme clubs, again, failed. They didn't have a clue who they're selling to, why they're interested in the club, and what prompted that inquiry. They had no idea. So how can they tailor their promotion of their member experience towards that person's needs, even if they promote at all? Stage three, promotion. So you've learned all you need to know about your prospect to enable you to make that tailored promotion towards their needs. And that promotion is gonna be based on your facilities, services, unique selling points, member benefits and discounts, as we said earlier. So let's look at a few examples of how you would tell your promotion of what you've learned. So I'll give you one example. From asking the research questions, you find out that this is a person who's retiring from contact sport. They've been playing contact sport to a high level all their lives, got to an age where they can't play anymore, and they want to take golf more seriously. So first of all, you understand that they're new to the game of golf. So what are you going to promote in a tailored fashion? It's simple. You're going to talk about lessons, the pro team, custom fitting services, and your practice facilities. If this person has been paying, playing contact sport all their life competitively, well, they're going to be interested in the competitive aspect of your club. So you talk to them about the competitions, specifically ones for higher handicaps. Again, same for teams and how to represent. Discuss the regular roll-ups the regular groups, and don't just talk about the golfing habits, talk about their social habits as well, when they tend to play, the fact they go away on away days and golfing holidays and stuff, this will all relate back to this retiring sportsman or lady. Again, if they've been playing in rugby teams, hockey teams, football teams, cricket teams, they will have been away on tour, and I can guarantee the social aspect of your club is going to be very appealing. Right? So shout about the social element of your club, which is also a great way for them to meet other new members, like-minded members, members of similar ability, members of similar background, etc. I'll give you another example. Quite simply, you find out that um, you have a senior golfer who is a member of a local club who is unhappy with the course condition uh, and lack of investment, serious lack of investment. He's been a member of that club for a long time. So what are you going to promote in a tailored fashion? to this unhappy senior golfer who's been a member of a local club for years and years and years. Well, the obvious one is you're going to talk about your recent and any future investments on the golf course, but also promote any investments you've made off the golf course. So machinery, a lot of you now will have a, a machine that irons the greens. Well, again, you know, if you, you're ironing your greens to make sure your greens are in the best possible condition all year round for your members. They haven't bought a new machine for over 10 years. They haven't had a head greenkeeper for the last five years. The course has been going downhill for years and years. Does that apply to that senior golfer? Is that going to inspire him and excite him? Is that a tailored promotion? Of course it is. You're going to talk to him about the senior section, obviously. But again, don't just talk about the golfing habits. Talk about the social aspects that your club has to offer seniors also. Talk about the integration protocol at your club. This senior golfer is going to be a bit skeptical, intimidated, possibly nervous about leaving his community. He's been a member there for years and years. He's going to be deeply entrenched in the senior community and, and, and club life. Whether he was integrated well by the team, whether he found his own way years ago. It's your job to promote the fact that you facilitate friendships at your club. And your motto is that you help 
you encourage and you make introductions for new members. You don't allow new members to, to do lonely at your club. You're going to promote your strengths over the competitor's weakness, so you're going to shout about your USPs. Promote those things that make you stand out from the crowd. Always be quick to point out anything you do different or better, as we said earlier, but without dissing the competitor. So if you know that your course through investment on drainage has been, has been closed less days this winter than your local competitor clubs, then you know, during your promotion, you could say, you know, we're very proud of the fact that the owners have invested heavily uh, on draining the course, especially the fairways. And we've only been closed five days in what's the wettest winter ever, which happened to follow the wettest summer ever, by the way, which is a fact. And we really feel for our, our local clubs um, because they've been, some of them have been closed up to four or five weeks. So you're not dissing them, you're just making the fact that your drainage is better without naming any clubs and without dissing them. You're going to promote special offers. And what I would advise is whenever you put special offers out there, you add in a call to action to create that urgency to join. So whether it's time-led or number-led, so for example, if you're waiving your joining fee, then you could say there's no joining fee until the end of the month, or there's no joining fee for the first 20 who take up this offer. So you're just trying to create that urgency for them to want to join. Step four of the call, the art of booking the appointment. So I've an effectively manage your inquiry call using these tactics, and simple tactics they are, you will have inspired the prospect to want to agree to meet you. They bought into you. They want to know more. They want to meet you. You've, but you've built that rapport. You've built that bond. You've gained that trust. Always promote the idea of a club and course tour and the opportunity of discussing member benefits further and advise of the time to allow. What if they've had a bad experience elsewhere? Well, last week they went on two appointments at competitor clubs they sat in the manager's office, which is a horrendous place, by the way, to take your prospects. They sat in the office. They were there for five, 10 minutes. They weren't even offered a drink. They were told maybe about the things they cannot do as a member. And they left with the prices written on a yellow, sticky post-it note. How uninspirational is that? Whereas you, you've told them, there's a reason for you to come and see us. We're going to give you a tour of the club. We'll give you a short tour of the golf course to bring a jacket with you. We're going to discuss the membership benefits uh, and all of the wonderful things we afford our members in more detail over a coffee. And we'll be no more than 40 minutes so they don't cut you short. So they're definitely there's more reason for them to want to come and see you, especially if they've had a bad experience as well, which I can tell you they would probably would have had. You're going to offer them the chance uh, to bring a decision maker with them. So always try and get them to bring other people with you, whether it's the boss, if it's a corporate lead. Uh, could be the wife, uh, could be the playing partners. Think of that Simi golfer. He's not going to be the only person unhappy at that competitive club. So, you know, just, just plant the seed, ask him. You know, if your regular playing partners want to come with you as well, they're very, very welcome. As they say, it's better to sell to two, three or four in this case, than sell to one. So the stats here on data capture, now these baffle me. So during the call, before the call ends, you're going to get all the data, you would have got name at the start, obviously. You're going to get name and telephone number. You're going to get uh, the email address and you're going to get the home address. So look, the pilot clubs here only learned the name and the phone number 50% of the time. And then only 5% of the time took the email and home address. What if that prospect didn't turn up? You've got no way of getting hold of them. And then the call comes to an end. You're going to confirm the meeting with an email to confirm the appointment. Obviously, the body of the email will confirm who to meet, where to meet, time, etc. But think, what else could I attach or link to this email to further inspire and tailor our services to that person's needs? So think of that retiring sportsman or lady. What was applicable to them? The competition fixtures list and the social calendar. What applies to all prospects and shouts about club life and the member experience and your club cares culture are your members' newsletters. You all do them. You send them out at least once a month, attach the last two or three, and that really does promote your member experience. You're also going to make a call, a call to waterproof the appointment the day before or at worst the morning of. So, you know, in that call, you're going to ask, have you safely received my email? Are you still okay to come? People genuinely do forget. 
Have you had a chance to speak to your regular playing partners, for example? What if you call, but your competitors don't? So if I booked two show rounds next Saturday and you bother to call me on Friday to waterproof the appointment and the competitors don't. As they say, rapport sells. Your prospects will start to think that you are taking that business far more seriously than your competitors. All right, now then, let's say for argument's sake, they turn up at your club a week later. You inspired them enough for them to turn up. Fantastic. What do we do at the start? Do we stick them in a buggy and take them straight out onto the golf course? No, we don't. We sit them down in an inspirational area and develop the conversation based on what you learned at the call stage. This is your opportunity to dig deep. Your prospect will always open up more when you sit them down, look them in the eye, and over a coffee, discuss their needs. You're going to develop that conversation based on history, habits, ability, their reason for wanting to join. And the main benefits here, just to summarize the main benefits of the pre tour sit down needs analysis chat. First of all, you're going to relax them. Just think, you, know, you forget how intimidating it is for this prospect to come along to your golf club and sit down and meet you. Think how you felt when you went for your interview. It familiarizes them with the area that you're going to return to for the sale, which is important. If you choose the right area, and I'm not just saying about choosing your best table in, in the house, you're also going to make sure that you give them the view. So don't pull out the seat that faces the wall. Make sure they sit in the chair and you afford them those beautiful vistas across your golf course. So it inspires them. So while you sit them down, you disappear for just a minute or two while you order them a coffee or a tea, and then just let them take in the view. It relaxes them, familiarizes them, and inspires them if you choose the right area, not the office. You may as well take them to the broom cupboard. It allows you to tailor your verbal promotion from the outset, and it also allows you to relate your course to tour to their golfing ability, which we'll cover later. Now then, tailoring the tour. Every single tour will differ. So where you take them first, what you promote to them, and how you relate each aspect of the club will differ dependent on your prospect's requirements, experience, interests, and ability. Avoid those museum cell tours where you sell the same joke on the same corner of the same corridor. It's boring for you. Your prospect will see through you. Where's the job satisfaction in that? Let's be fair. We ask testers just one subjective question within our benchmarking criteria for this particular test, and we ask them, would you join this club based on this experience? And I can tell you, whenever the tour and the verbal promotion does not relate whatsoever to our mystery testers' needs and ability, the answer is always, and I promise you, it's always no. And that tells me it is not inspirational when receiving a generic promotion and museum-style tour. Now, during the tour, you need to make a mental note of any emotional triggers in readiness for the sales stage, which is particularly important for when attempting to overcome any objections to the sale. So for example, when you took that competitive sportsman up to the winner's boards and up to the trophy cabinet, you haven't just pointed to them from 30 yards away, you've taken them up to the winner's boards, you've taken them to the trophy cabinet, you've inspired them, you know it is relevant and it's, it, it's related to that person's needs and you can see they got excited. You can use that when you're asking for the sale and you can definitely use that when you're att att attempting to overcome any objections that they might have to signing up on the day. Right, the tour itself. You're gonna take them to the changing rooms and you're gonna take them to the notice boards. And again, you're not just gonna point at the notice boards for 50 yards away, you're gonna stop and you're gonna discuss the member services. Your member boards represent the member experience, your club life and your community. They should have everything you afford members posted on them. So please make sure they're well presented, informative, up to date. The content and how it's posted represents how you value your members. Ask yourself the question now, would you take the owner of your club to your notice boards now? More importantly, would you take the prospect there now? At the end of the day, the prospect could end up paying both your wages. So the prospect to me is far more important. 
You're gonna take them on a short tour of the course on a buggy, and you're gonna take them to points of interest, not all 18 holes, as tempting as it might be on a nice sunny day like today. You're gonna visit key signature holes, holes with significant history, holes that have had investment or future investment planned, and holes that afford beautiful views. You all know exactly where you would take them on the golf, on your own courses. And whilst you're out there, you're gonna relate the course tour to their ability. You've got to inspire them. Be very, very careful not to lose their interest or to frighten them off where you take them and the terminology you use. So for example, if you take, you know, if you take in a high handicapper out on the golf course, just think you wouldn't take that high handicapper to your longest hole or holes with long carry over, over rough or water, big pot bunkers, undulating greens, rough up to your knees, you know, tight fairways. You might take the lower handicappers to your more challenging holes simply to inspire them. So to be very, very careful that you tailor the course tour purely based around that golf visibility to inspire them and not fight them off. To further inspire them, get off the buggy and walk onto your tees and your greens. The best of the best in sales out there now take a couple of balls and the very best take a putter and let the prospect have a few putts. And again, if it's a low handicapper, go to an undulating green and give them a downhill putt, left to right, right to left, and show them how good your greens are. If it's a higher handicapper, obviously take them to a more flat green and let them have a putt on your greens. Promote your course USPs whilst you're out there. That's a no brainer. So whether you're talking about you know, the drainage factor, your winter policies, the fact you never have any temporary greens or tees, you've got trolleys and buggies all year round, if that's a, if that's a fact. You've got USGA greens, be careful with that one. You know, most prospects will look at you cross-eyed when you say USGA greens, you may as well say ABCD greens. Explain what they are. Explain the features and benefits when you're talking about USPs. Promote your course designer if that's relevant. The fact that you might have a variety of team positions, so offer golf for all standards. Your back tees might be open for play for lower handicappers. Again, talk about recent and future investments. You might have had any recent accolades, top 100s. It might be for a senior golfer, it's flat and an easy walk. That's very relevant. Just shout about your USPs, particularly those that help you stand out over your competitors. Ask yourself, what if you're not doing this and your competitors are? You're gonna pop into the pro shop and make introductions. You're gonna stop at the practice area or your range. And again, you're gonna exit the buggy and promote your USPs. So just quickly, it could be that it's an undercover range, it's floodlit. You might have a grass teeing area for members only. You might just promote the ball quality and then the, the ball discount. They might be free balls. The opening hours, you, know, you all know what USPs are, then make sure you're promoting them. You're definitely gonna stop at the bar and the restaurant as part of your tour. You need to inspire prospects to think about using the bar and attending events, even at this stage. This is crucial for integration and retention. So, you know, whether you're talking about the food quality, uh, the value for money aspect and the member discount, any awards that the restaurant might have won, the ambience, it's relaxed, it's casual, it's open to anybody. Reference some sporting occasions where the atmosphere has been electric over the, the, you know, the winter period with the Six Nations rugby, etc. We won't talk about how England got on. Sorry, guys, I had to put that in. <laughs> uh, it's, it's open to friends and family, so it's a great place to celebrate uh, special occasions. Just inspire them at this stage so they can see themselves using the bar. Member services, these are the things that really add value to a membership. Nomadic golfers will have no idea whatsoever that you afford these type of services. So advise how new members are integrated into club life, both on and off the golf course. Make it very clear that new members do not do lonely at this club and going off track a little some of our best managers are using our new member integration survey questions to measure their new member journey we've written nearly 100 questions purely based on new member integration they have cherry picked the questions that they want to send out and they are surveying new members some send a one-off survey after for example 30 days and they can choose how many days so just an example 30 days Others choose to send a series of shuttle surveys at strategic times. So for example, we've got one manager out there that sends uh, three surveys to new members. So each new member will receive a survey after 30 days, 60 days, and 90 days. Again, 
it's your choice when you set those. And the information coming back from, from the new members is fantastic. Now, if this is something you're doing at your club, promote this service to reassure prospects that you have a service plan in place, simply to assist new members to get the very best out of their membership. You're also going to advise uh, the prospects of the ongoing support, especially relevant uh, to put loan prospects at ease. So simply discuss the fact that you make introductions to other members, uh, you host new member nights or equivalent, you run member meet member initiatives, you complete welcome calls and induction meetings, and you also complete service calls. You're gonna discuss the social aspects, so important, and the fact that this is a great opportunity for your new members to meet other members and staff. Some managers now even invite new members as their guests to the social event, and they arrange a table plan to facilitate friendships. Don't forget also that you can invite you know, new members, uh, wives or partners, etc., friends and family to your social events. You never know, you can send another membership there as well, but you're, all you're doing is building on your community. You're gonna talk about your, uh, your sections, your roll-ups, your regular groups and your teams. But while you do that, you can advise of the golfing and social habits whilst relating the promotion, by the way, to the membership needs, ability, age and category. So you're relating it all the time. Shout about your reserve tea times, which is specifically uh, relevant to commercial clubs with a corporate reputation. And you can also talk about your discounts and benefits. And make sure you advertise these uh, on a standalone section on your notice boards. Why wouldn't you? Keep reminding your members why they cannot afford not to rejoin. Uh, and those should include internal discounts uh, and external benefits as well. Now then the trial close. So let's say the tour is coming to an end. On en route back to your inspirational area to summarize and close a sale, ask yourselves the question, have I done enough to inspire this prospect to join? And by simply asking um, some questions to seek their opinion, you will establish if there are gonna be any objections to this sale. So let's look at the stats here. We said about returning back to your inspirational area, pilot club is 9%. I can tell you that nine out of 10 testers, nine out of 10 testers, the meeting ended either with a buggy um, pulling up alongside the mystery testers car or it ended in the pro shop or in the reception area. 59 Club Industry, they've got room for improvement there. And the podium clubs, eight out of 10 of our testers we went that were taken back to that inspirational setting with a lovely view. Coffee was topped up. And this is where then the membership advisor would recap on areas that related to the prospect's needs and confirm the applicable membership category, just reminding them why we are the club for you. So requesting the sale. Always request the sale, always. Very difficult to do that in the car park. All right, so take them back to the inspirational area and request the sale. Pilot clubs here, again, failed miserably. They only asked for the sale, I think out of all the tests that we did once. So um, the 50 Club industry, six out of 10 on average of our testers get asked for the sale and the podium, pretty much not far off. Every single prospect is being asked if they would like to join in a nice, relaxed, casual manner. At the end of the day, you're selling leisure. Um, not everyone is gonna say yes, we all know that. So whether you get the answers, I need to ask my partner, I need time to think about it. You need to attempt to establish if there's any underlying reason as to, as to why they won't commit on the day. This just might open up the prospect to discuss the real reason why they won't commit on the day. So you can see here the pilot clubs for the odd one or two that did ask for the sale, they didn't attempt to overcome the objection. 59 club, again, room for improvement, could do better. But again, the podium, eight out of 10 times, if our tester said no, those membership advisors are equivalent. We're trying to find out, is there a real reason why you won't commit? And if I find that out, I can then obviously try and overcome that and get you to sign up. Now, for those that don't sign up, you need to make a call to chase a sale, not an email, a call. All right, you spent time with this person. They bought into you. You built up a bond. You got that rapport going. All right, and then all of a sudden you send an email. You need to call, and during that call, 
that call must include um, a call to action to create that urgency to join again, time led or number led. This is your last time of touching that person most properly. So you need to inspire them at this stage to get a decision and hopefully a yes. So you can see pilot clubs only chase the sale down 6% of the time. Our 59 club industry are only chasing 49% of the time and the best performers within our systems are chasing 91% of the time. So before we look at new member integration tactics, here's a quick reminder of the sales process with related mystery shopper stats. So we start off with the core. As we said, you avoid talking price, you deflect the price conversation into the needs analysis where you understand what they really want from the membership, what prompted the inquiry, discuss their history, habits, and ability, and then you promote accordingly. You discuss your services and your USPs to inspire them to want to attend a show round. So you book the show round, you capture that data, you confirm the appointment with an email, and then you waterproof the call, or you waterproof the appointment rather with a call to make sure they still come in and to stand out from your competitors. The show round appointment, you sit down at the start, you do not go straight into your tour of your course and or your club. You sit down in an inspirational area and you develop the needs analysis conversation. Whilst you're touring, you're gonna promote your member services, the social aspect of your club, your member benefits and your discounts. You take them on a short tour of the course and a buggy. And whilst you're out there, you discuss the course history and any USPs that stand out, make you different, make you better. The end of the tour, you go through your trial close questions, you, re you return back to an inspirational area, you top up their coffee, you remind them of all the wonderful things that relate to the membership category and their needs and you request a sale, always trying to overcome objections to the sale. And then if they don't sign up, then your sales system should include you calling them within five days, not just emailing them. Right, so good job, this person actually signed up. Now, it's your job to entrench members deep, and I mean deep into club life. This process starts at the very day they sign up. England Golf will tell you that a significantly higher percentage of members will leave your club in the first two and a half years. 59 Club can tell you that this is mainly down to poor or zero integration based on members that we have planted into clubs. You cannot afford to leave integration to chance. You must help and encourage new members to get involved from the off. Things like arranging an induction meeting with a key staff member to help them get the most out of the membership. You've got to think, whilst they were on the phone with you and whilst they, you, know, you had that um, 40, 45 minutes with them, they were in a decision-making mode. They will remember less than 50% of all the wonderful benefits and services, et cetera, that you promoted to them. Now they've joined to make sure you get the, you know, you help them get the most out of the membership. They're now in a learning mode. So that induction meeting is key. And there's so many managers and clubs out there that don't perform an induction meeting or even give them a welcome call. You need to book the first tea time being very mindful of the playing partners. What you don't want is them, the new member booking their first tea time, playing with the member who is the opposite of an ambassador member, and there's a lot of harm could be done in that first few weeks. So you pair them up with the relevant people. You're also gonna book them onto their first competition and enroll them into the knockout. It's your job to facilitate partnerships that could last a lifetime. Introduce them to like-minded members, like we said before, members of similar ability, background, other new members, and also staff. Book them onto your new members, like or equivalent. Basically, it's your job to facilitate friendships both on and off the golf course. We mentioned earlier about those managers surveying the new member experience. These are the type of services they're asking about to ensure staff are delivering what was promised at the sales and sign-up stage. So is your job done yet? Not quite. When it comes to new member engagement, members need to feel a sense of belonging from day one. They need engagement, they need recognition, and as Greg Patterson will tell you, they need the warm embrace. 
for your frontline staff to make a big impact and build bridges with new members from the off. Staff need to know when these new members are playing. So you need process. You need a system in place to ensure that all relevant staff are made aware when new members are present. Your staff should be checking every single morning and asking the question when they come in, one of the first questions they ask, is there any new members playing today? So say in the winter they've been asking, are we open? Are there any temps on, are buggies on, trolleys on? They might be asking any VIPs, any big societies on. One of the questions they should ask is, are there any new members today? If they're made aware that a new member is playing, and of the personal profile from that data card that you would have noted during the sales process, they can instigate a more personal and meaningful conversation, making that new member's first experience far more welcoming and memorable. At the end of the day, you've got just one chance to make a great first impression. You've got to make that count. Okay, so I really hope this is hi uh, highlighted that you cannot leave sales and service to chance. Uh, to remind you, your staff need process, motivation and reward if you expect them to deliver great service consistently. Uh, it's all too often assumed in golf that uh, just because a staff member plays golf, they will instinctively perform within their role. Uh, I think we all know this is one of the biggest misconceptions in golf. Uh, 59 Club are privileged to see inside huge numbers of golf operations and every single month witness numerous examples of nice people, nice people who are badly managed, poorly trained or both. So why introduce Mr. Shopper audits? For me, insiders are too close to their operation to identify flaws. Strengths are rarely celebrated. And to their detriment, clubs naturally deliver their interpretation of good with nothing tangible to measure this against or even to aspire to. So mystery shopper audits and customer satisfaction surveys enable you to view the club, view your club through the eyes of your customers. The feedback allows you to make informed decisions simply around daily operations and better perfect your customer journey. So some examples of how our managers are using our systems. Um, they're using them to establish the preferred suppliers of its members when changing breweries. This came up from surveys. Some have surveyed members to establish what shop stock they should introduce next season. Some clubs have prioritized course maintenance programs based on its members' preference. Uh, others have made changes to catering based on feedback from their annual member survey, whilst others, others have introduced better lines of communication at check-in, so the check-in for visiting golfers to make them aware uh, of previously unpromoted course management items that have come up from mystery shopper audits. Uh, the most damaging effect of resisting customer feedback is never knowing what leads your customers to make the decision to never return again, or worse still, to never come in the first place. So where do you start? It's simple, you start with change. Uh, what you measure and how you monitor performance are the factors that will determine the successful outcome of any audit that you perform. Uh, that's where we come in. So quite simply, 59 Club supplies the white paper, you could call it, that sets out how to manage sales and service, and then calls on its mystery shopper audits and surveys to measure and improve across all revenue streams coming into your club. Uh, and not forgetting that with us, you also benefit from the ability to make service comparisons to your chosen competitors, the 59 club industry and our best performing clubs. And, and really that's what drives you and our managers to advance. Uh, our mission has always been to drive industry standards up. We've never been expensive or out of anybody's reach. We've worked to create an affordable package that provides clubs with the complete solution to independently monitor their own service levels and achieve excellence. Our My59 software, with its wealth of uh, mystery shopper audits, uh, golf specific survey templates and customer review tools is now uh, just 500 pound a year. That also includes a trio of staff training opportunities delivered by us. Uh, plus we just added a brand new uh, member communication app called Goltel, uh, which creates another channel for club members to privately their, uh, communicate their views direct with you. So a little special offer just for you guys. 
Uh, any GCMA member who purchases My59 before the end of May will receive an independent audit uh, of their choice, so delivered by us, uh, and also will qualify to receive SWOT analysis training from us um, based on their results from that particular audit. So feel free to visit our website for recent press releases. Um, we will gladly pass on details of fellow Fit and Club managers. We'll be happy to talk to you about their experiences using our services, whether that be our mystery shopper audits, or any surveys they've launched through the My Fit and Nine platform, any staff training that they've had. And okay, here are my contact details for anybody who wants to chat further. Uh, I will, of course, as I said at the start, I will, of course, be in touch, as promised, to discuss your needs and answer any questions you may have. You can also join in on one of our own 59 Club webinars, which are listed on the My59 website address there, uh, where we walk you through our online platforms and discuss other products and services available within My59. Obviously, we've already covered one today, which is our membership sales call and showround uh, criteria. In the meantime, look out for the My Tonight survey based on today. Uh, I'd like to thank you very much for your time. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I look forward to speaking to you very soon. So back to you, Mike.